Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Harvey David Hopper, and he says this is probably a dumb question. No, it is not. The only dumb question is the one that is not asked. I was working an MCOM event on two meters recently. I had my solar panels hooked up and feeding my battery, 100 amp hour AGM. No mention in there of a charge controller. Uh, that was fully charged, was on a trickle charge for over a week and was showing 13 plus volts. There were some brief periods of heavy clouds and rain. During some of these periods, my radio, a Yesu FT2980R, was cutting out and I was losing contact with that control. During periods of good sunshine, no problems. During the problem times, my solar charge controller hmm, was dropping into the 12 volt range and lower. When the output of the solar panels drops to an unhealthy level, is the battery, which is running my radio, assuming the same unhealthy voltage? No. I just watched your video of number 52 and I'm hoping you may have a feel for that. If that is the case, then during periods of lousy sunshine, it would seem the moral of the story is not to hook up my solar panels. If you would like to ask a question, you certainly can. Uh, one of the best ways, if you're a patron, you can use the patron messaging system. If uh, you're not, you can go to askdave at arrl.org, or you can send a letter with uh, as many pictures or whatever as you want to P.O. Box 98, Ridgeway, Colorado, 81432. Let's look at a couple charts before we answer that question. The interesting thing about solar panels is that they will uh, assume the voltage of the system. This right here is a 12 volt DC solar panel. It's 100 watts, great panel. Unfortunately, I broke it, I mean literally broke it. Uh, so this panel that's down on the ground here, which is a 240 watt, 24 volt panel, is what I'm using now. You need a charge controller at all times. Okay, this particular charge controller, a whole $11, was uh, something sent to me by a viewer, and I picked one up since it was only $11. Uh, this is the link for it. Uh, and it works both with 12 or 24 volt panels and will charge the 12 volt battery. You have to go through and set some of the parameters. This is an example of a 100 amp hour. Um, uh, let's see, it's a voltage regulated. It's a AGM, 12 volts, 100 amps. This is what it looks like. Uh, I've not used this particular brand. It was just a picture I got off the internet. Now, uh, I want to talk a little bit about these batteries. Uh, first of all, this battery should have gotten you through the entire event without recharging. Okay, you didn't even need the solar panel. Um, about lead acid batteries, AGM batteries come in two flavors. The starting batteries, lots of current all at once and then rest. A heavy discharge can ruin the battery, even one. A deep cycle battery is meant for little power over longer periods of time. It's designed for 500 or more deep discharges over its life cycle. And noting that if you are using solar, you must have a charge controller. And this is the rig he mentions using. It's a two meter uh, only rig, FM only, the FT2980R, nice little radio. Now, one of the things that you can do if you are on the site and your voltage is sagging a bit, you can get a battery booster. Here's the one from MFJ, model 4416C for $249. Uh, this same one, their same idea, is uh, done by West Mountain Radio. It's called the N8XJK for the guy who invented it, who's now a silent key. Um, I have one of his originals that I used when my Yesu FTDX 3000 would not run properly on uh, just 12 volts. It needed about 12.8, so 
So this thing boosted it up to 13.8. Let's pick up where the charts left off and see if we can answer this question more specifically. Uh, first of all, as I said earlier, a deep cycle AGM battery should have gotten you through the entire event without any recharging. Um, if you do have a solar panel, the panel must, absolutely must, be connected to the battery through a charge controller. You do not want to overcharge an AGM battery. You can ruin it. Okay, so it should be 14.1 volts max. You should get the right battery tender for it if you're going to keep that, or if you're going to do solar, use that charge controller, whatever charge controller you have. You should make sure that you never allow the charge controller to go up into um, the 15.1 volt uh, cycle, uh, which is the one that uh, equalizes the batteries. should never do that to a sealed battery because it will create hydrogen and that hydrogen will leave the battery and not go back and, and you will have a problem. So um, y the, the way you describe it about the fact that the power sags when the solar panel goes, or when the light goes away. A solar panel just is a current driven device. It simply drops out of the circuit, okay? Solar panels do not absorb any significant amount of energy. And by that, I mean they don't absorb any energy from the system. They're either on providing energy or they're out of the picture, okay? So that leads me to suspect your battery, that your battery is uh, past end of life. Because what happens to batteries like that is that they seem to charge very quickly and the voltage goes up. But as you try to draw current from the battery, it drops quickly, okay? So I think your battery needs to be replaced. Make sure you get a deep cycle battery, if you can, get the lithium iron phosphate. Uh, those are still very expensive. So either wait 10 years for those to come down or get yourself another uh, AGM and make sure it is a deep cycle AGM. You can get them in Interstate Battery, a lot of other battery stores. If you go to Walmart, they sell a quote, marine battery. It's about 80 amp hours. It will sort of do. It should get you through a complete event. And uh, you can keep that uh, on the solar charge controller too. That particular solar charge controller I showed you is a smart one. It will trickle charge the batteries and every so often give it a boost charge uh, up to the full charging uh, voltage, which is very nice. It's a nice little charge controller actually. So uh, bottom line, I think looking at your question here, I think you need to look at that battery uh, you can tell whether that battery works by putting a load on it um, of some kind or trying to operate it with your radio and seeing what happens to the voltage. The voltage should start out for rested battery at 12.7 volts. If it's higher than that, there's something weird going on. But start using it, it'll be 12.7 volts and operate it till it's 12 volts. You should never take a lead acid battery down below 12 volts, regardless of what anybody says. And by the way, that's only 50% uh, discharge, but you don't want to go further because you can damage the battery. Now, the deep cycle, true deep cycle batteries, you can take down quite a ways, but then you're ticking off one of those 500s that I told you earlier. 500 charge and discharges. So Harvey, I hope that uh, helps answer your question. And until we next meet, 73.